Welcome to another video in our NC Turbo Tech series. I'm Brandon, lead engineer here at Flying Miata, and today we're gonna to talk about thermal management. So more power, which is the whole point of the turbo kit, means more heat, that's just physics. But how you manage that heat, how you protect parts from that heat, and how you lessen that heat as much as possible can really make the difference between a decent kit and an excellent kit. Now there are many different parts in this kit that make it as good as possible on thermal management. Today we're just gonna to touch on a few of the major aspects of that. So the engine bay of the NC is pretty tight. We didn't really have a lot of places to put the turbo itself, especially since we're retaining the stock catalytic converter. So that meant that it, the turbo is close to things that don't like heat. You've got your plastic valve cover over here. You have brake lines right here. Your front right uh, brake line actually dips down right here. So we needed comprehensive coverage to keep all that stuff safe. We tried a bunch of different ways to do it. Metal shields, insulated shields, turbo blankets, multiple different kinds of turbo blankets, and we settled on this one. Now this is a custom turbo blanket made for us by PTP, and it has very comprehensive coverage for everything that we need. Good solid coverage back here for the plastic valve cover, good coverage here for the brake lines, and then the reason this wraps down around so well is because there's that brake line, the front right, right here, and we needed coverage from that. So reasonably easy to install, good anchor points, and it protects everything really well. The other advantages are that the turbo blanket helps hold the heat in. That's the whole point, right? Well, holding that heat in means that your turbo is gonna spool up faster. It means that the under hood temperature is lower. So there are performance advantages in addition to simply the safety factor of keeping the heat away from all the sensitive stuff. So you can see the turbo blanket installed in the car here, obviously tight spaces, but it gives you good protection on all of the delicate parts. The brake lines right here, the heater core hoses, and again, that brake line that drops down right there. So one of the first things we looked at when we were designing the turbo kit and the whole layout of the turbo kit is where to put the air filter. So we want the air filter to suck in the coolest air possible. Cold air is more dense, that's more oxygen, that's more power quicker spool for the turbo, all that fun stuff. So we wanted to get it as far away from any potential heat sources as possible. So that's the exhaust, the whole turbo, that's the radiator, that's the engine itself. We wanted it to be in as cool of a corner as possible. So we stuck it here, pretty much as far away as we could get it, and we put a baffle around it so that it was mostly sealed off from the engine bay and from the hot air of the engine bay. Even with the air filter in this corner, somewhat separated from the engine bay by this baffle, it's got a good supply of cold air from underneath the headlight. We were still seeing very high intake temps. So we had a temperature sensor right here, right behind the air filter. So no other factors involved. And the air temps were very high, surprisingly high, frankly, even again, given that it was in this corner. So we put a lid on it, literally. We put a lid on the air box to completely isolate it from the engine bay. And that was really the magic bullet. That gave us ambient air temps behind the air filter. And that was the solution. But then for good measure, we Cerakoted the lid and the air box to further prevent any kind of heat transfer through the aluminum. And frankly, just to make it look good. Yeah, look at that logo. So now that we have the ideal intake location and we have it separated off with the air box, we still need to cool the air as much as possible. Now the act of compressing air heats it. Different methods of compression heat it more efficiently or less efficiently. Turbos are actually some of the most efficient ways to compress air, but it still makes the air hotter when it's compressed. Starting with the intake temp as low as possible gives us a head start there, but we still need to shed that heat. So we use this air to air intercooler to shed that heat that's made by compressing the air. So this is custom made for us to our design by CSF. It has custom cast end tanks. It uses a bar and plate construction. We chose bar and plate because it's very durable and it also gives a bigger surface area for better heat transfer. Now the intercooler also has a coating on it so that it looks good for a long time but it's a thermal dispersion coating, so that coating does not hurt its effectiveness in terms of its ability to shed heat. Now it also has our awesome FM logo here on the front, but it is symmetrical. If you'd rather be subtle, there is no logo on the back and you can just install it that way. So like we discussed earlier, 
More power equals more heat, simple physics. The turbo does also add a little bit of heat just because it's there are spinning parts in there and it's connected to the exhaust. Now the oil cooling is what keeps it cool during operation when the car is running. The water cooling doesn't really make a huge difference during operation. It comes into play when you shut the car off with what's called thermal siphoning and it basically sucks the heat away from the center section of the turbo to keep the oil in there clean to prevent coking of the bearings all that fun stuff now a turbo does add some heat to the coolant when it's a water-cooled turbo which we strongly recommend and only use but we also mitigate that as much as possible so we take the water that is fed to the turbo from the coolest source that we have, which is the engine block. So we have a custom fitting right here that takes water from the block before it's gone through the head. And we route that up around the corner to this fitting to feed the turbo. Now this feed fitting is custom and extended so that it gets the soft silicone hose, which still is very good with heat, away from the turbine housing as much as possible. From there, we've got a metal hard line here, again, get the silicone line as far away from the turbo as possible, long-term reliability, all that fun stuff. So now that the water has been through the turbo, we need to return it back to the main system. Now it'd be really easy to return that to the engine, but if we return hot water that's been made hotter by the turbo to the engine, that's gonna increase the coolant temp as a whole. So what we wanna do, which is a little more complicated, is return it to the radiator itself. So we get the turbo water back to the radiator by routing it around the back of the engine here, down through all of this, and to this fitting here. Now all NC radiators have this fitting. It's a steam fitting that runs off to the expansion tank here. So we run the turbo water return line here to a T that goes into that radiator and the vertical leg allows the air to escape. So it still acts as a steam vent for the entire engine, since this is a high point, and also the radiator, but the hot water from the turbo goes into the radiator as opposed to into the expansion tank. So that way, the hot water from the turbo gets cooled off in the radiator, and then it gets sucked back into the engine. So why did we choose to route the water for the turbo this way instead of something easier? Because of experience. With our experience in decades of turbocharging NA and NB Miatas and our custom reroute housing, we have discovered that taking the hot turbo water and putting it back into the radiator is very, very important. The OEs know this as well. If you look at turbocharged engines from this rough vintage, vintage maybe not old ones, you'll see the exact same behavior. Uh, this, this engine in a turbocharged application takes the water from this exact spot and puts it back into the upper radiator hose. We didn't really have that option with the packaging of this car, which is why we put it straight into the radiator in a different way. But still, we got that water into the radiator to cool it off before it goes to the engine. So the last thing we're gonna talk about is airflow. And not airflow into the engine, but airflow through the heat exchangers. Heat exchangers are your radiator, the intercooler, that kind of thing. So you want high pressure in front of your heat exchangers and you want low pressure behind your heat exchangers to help promote airflow through your heat exchangers. The other part is you have to make sure that all the air that comes into the mouth goes through the heat exchangers and doesn't have a path outside. It's gonna take the path of least resistance. So if it can go around the heat exchanger, it will. Mazda actually did a really good job with this. There's a lot of plastic ductwork in here that ensures that most of the air that goes into the mouth is forced through the different heat exchangers. Now, when we install the turbo kit, we kind of mess that up a little bit. The hot side intercooler hose, we have to cut a hole in the bulkhead to get that through. For the cold side, we don't have to cut a hole because there already is one. The problem is that the hole is much bigger than it needs to be. So we have a three inch diameter hose that's going through a large rectangle that's much bigger than it. So those two things could be openings to allow the air that comes into the mouth to bypass the heat exchangers and increase the pressure behind the heat exchangers. So how do we fix that? We fix that by using what we call bulkhead plates. Now on the hot side, we have a bulkhead plate here that locates the hole, makes it easy to drill, like I talked about in the kit layout video, but it also seals up that hole. Now it's not 100% seal because we want a little bit of freedom of movement and tolerance and that kind of thing in there, but there's a very small gap. On the cold side, again, 
That was a big hole that we're putting a smaller hose through, so we wanna to try to block as much of that as possible, so this bulkhead plate does that. It closes off most of that extra space so that it, the air can't bypass the heat exchangers and increase the pressure behind the heat exchangers without actually doing any work. Now, another layer in that is the plastic tray. So stock, your car has a plastic tray that goes between the metal bumper itself and the chassis of the car. That tray is in the way with the intercooler because the intercooler hoses need to go through that tray. So what do we do? Instead of removing that tray altogether in the instructions, so this is up to you, we give you instructions for how to cut out that tray so that you the tray stays in place and it's only modified where it needs to be for the intercooler hoses. All of that means that the pressure that comes in the front of the car is gonna go through the heat exchangers and it won't be able to bypass those heat exchangers and not cool anything off because it's not going through the heat exchanger and increasing the pressure behind the heat exchangers, making it less likely for air to flow through them in the first place. So there are a lot of details in this kit that contribute to it being as powerful and safe and durable and long-term effective as possible. A lot of which we didn't cover because they're small detail -y kind of things. But we did cover the intake air temperature. We locate the air filter and we box it off. We've got the intercooler that keeps everything cool. We have the turbo blanket that keeps all the parts safe and helps with performance a bit as well. We have the coolant plumbing. So we put the hot turbo water back into the radiator. And then we also have the airflow, ensuring that as much of the air that comes into the mouth as possible is forced through the heat exchangers and can't go anywhere else. So all of that and a lot of other things add up to making this kit something that you can bolt in, take to the track, take drive across the country and just not worry about. So that sums up thermal management of our NC Turbo Kit. Hopefully you enjoyed it, hopefully you learned something. Now this is one of a few videos in a series about the NC Turbo Kit. We have the turbo assembly, the turbo kit layout, and tuning theory. That's an especially good one, so be sure to check out those videos. We hope you're as excited about this kit as we are. Now be sure to check out the website for more information. We're also gonna have video instructions and written instructions that you can check out either before or after you buy. Again, I'm Brandon, thanks for watching.